We completed the chapter with regards to that which is permissible for a person to do in duration of a salah. And we said the fact that there were certain movements a person is allowed under certain conditions. Um, and with that, we could include the mobile phone. That if the mobile phone of a person also rings, that a person is permitted to close that phone off or press the button with inside his pocket to make sure the fact that the phone is turned off so that it does not become a nuisance for the people who are praying. Rather, a person should make sure of the fact that he is careful at uh, first moment when he comes into the masjid that he places his phone on silent so that it does not cause a person uh, any disturbance. But we start a new chapter, and this is Jibab fi sajdatun lissahu or fi sujudi lissahu. This is a chapter of uh, the prostration done upon a person when he forgets something in his salah. We know the fact that the human being, when he praises salah, that the shaitan tries his best to cause confusion with inside his salah by placing thoughts and whispers in his chest and in his heart, uh, causing him to either forget the fact that what he was praying or causing him to act out in his salah and pray something extra or causing him to, uh, to, to, to uh, lose out something in his salah from a rak'ah or something from the wajibat and so forth. So what does a person do in that situation? Uh, we know the fact that the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal allows us and it's a deen that which is uh, yusr, which is ease and it allows us to complete our prayer in manners and uh, to catch up in our rewards in manners that which Allah Azza wa Jal has prescribed for us and that's which is easy for the humans. We know the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did forget in his salah and it is well recorded in the ahadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he forgot after uh, leading salah the fact that when he did salam uh, after two rak'ahs and uh, he was meant to pray three and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did salam upon two so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did uh, stand for the third and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also uh, said salam upon three rak'ahs when he was supposed to do it after four and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also a hadith uh, pertaining the fact that he stood up after the second and did not sit down in his tashahud so all of these indications where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did forget and the wisdom behind it really is to teach the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as to what they should do. So there are three circumstances, three situations upon, a, uh, uh, upon uh, which a person should be doing his sajda lissahu. Uh, he should be doing his prostration upon forgetfulness. And we said the first is, إِذَا زَادَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ سَهْوًا That if a person uh, adds something into his prayer uh, out of forgetfulness. What do we mean by that? We mean the fact that the person, uh, for example, he um, adds in another, another rak'ah or the person uh, adds in another sajda or a person does a second rak'ah. So this is adding into the prayer. The second is إِذَا نَقَصَ مِنْهُ or مِنْهَا سَهْوًا or if a person uh, decreases in his salah out of forgetfulness. What do we mean? We mean the fact that the person may become forgetful and decrease in a rak'ah or the fact that the person might forget for, to do a sajda and just like that. Uh, number third is the fact that إِذَا حَصَلَ عِنْدَهُ شَكْ فِي زِيَادَةٍ أَوْ نَقْصِ The fact that the person is in doubt whether or not did he decrease in his salah or did he increase in his salah. So the first is the fact that the person uh, increased in his salah out to forgetfulness and he's sure of that. The second uh, is the fact that the person decreased in his salah and he's sure of it. And the third category is the fact that the person increased or decreased, but out of forgetfulness, he is in doubt whether or not which one did I do. Now we move on to um, the issues and do remember the fact that this sajdat is sahu is permitted 
for both the, the faridah to salah as well as the nawafil of the salah, meaning the fard that you're praying. If you forget in that, then you also uh, have to do or carry out the two sajdas of forgetfulness. Or if you decrease in your salah or increase in your salah when it's uh, concerning your nawafil, then you also have to carry out your sajda to sahu or the two, two sajdas within that. And the first uh, situation that the mu'allif, uh, hafizahullah, he mentioned is the fact that the person, when he increases in his af'al, so the first category is increasing in your salah and the increasing of af'al min jins salah So to carry out actions and to carry out actions of salah, that which are from part of salah, meaning to do another qiyam, meaning to do another rukur or to do another sajda. This is from the jins salah from the salah itself. They increase something. So we said whether it be a sajda or it be a rukur or it be a standing that if a person does forget to do that then know the fact that he has to carry out two sajdas he has to do two sajdas uh, uh, within his salah now this is at the end of the salah and just like that if a person he adds or increases in a salah وَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ إِلَّا بَعْدَ فِرَاغِهِ عَنْهَا that he does not know of the fact that he increased in his salah until after he has finished his prayer so the first we said the fact that he increased in his salah meaning he did an extra sajda or he did an extra ruku' but he knows the fact that i did that then he stood up for the second rak'ah then he stood up for the third then he stood up for the fourth after the fourth he will do two sajdas extra after tashahud so after tashahud he will do two extra sajdas and then do salam and this is another situation where a person he does an extra action with inside the salah but he only remembers the fact that he did the extra uh, action after salah so if it be for example the fact that the person has done something uh, extra with inside this uh, salah and he remembers after uh, he has finished the, the, the rak'ah then there's a number of situations. Then we have to remember the fact that if he leaves uh, a rukun of the salah, so we're, we're adding into the salah. So if he, if he adds into the salah, then know the fact that he only does two sajdas at the end of it. So he, amma in alima fi athna raka zaida fa inna yajlis fil hal wa yashtashahad illam yakun tashahada thumma yasud lissahu. So if he remembers the fact that, for example, a person, he did his, he stood up for his raka. He stood up and it's an extra and he remembers the fact that, oh no, I stood up for the fifth. And he remembers, then he sits down straight away. He does not complete that, uh, he does not complete that rak'ah. So if it's za'id, if it's an extra and he remembers, then he sits straight down into shahud. If he, for example, does an extra sajda, then he just gets up as normal. But for example, he's completed the whole rak'ah. Now he's going to stand up for the fifth, for example. What he does is he sits straight down and he does not complete that rak'ah. So the question is, do I complete that rak'ah za'id or not? The answer is no, you do not complete that extra rak'ah if you remember it in duration of salah. But if you did not remember until the, at the end, then you do two sajdas. But in duration of the salah, if you remember, then you sit down straight away, and then you do your tashahud, and then you do your two sajdas, and then do salam. Was that clear? Well, sir, if you understand, then everyone understands. Shall we go over that again? Okay. So we said a person increases in salah. And that's a mistake or not? It's a mistake to increase in your salah. Yeah? So we said the first is, for example, if a person increases in his salah, okay, but he remembers the fact that he increased at the end. Okay? So for example, I'm sitting down. I am sitting down and I stand up an extra rak'ah for the fifth one, Allahu Akbar, I'm praying my fifth one. And then I sit down and I did not remember until after I've completed the fifth rak'ah. I do two sajdas at the end. Okay? For the second situation we said that the person does the four rak'ahs and then he stands up for the fifth, Hamza. He stands up for the fifth. 
And if he stands up for the fifth, he's in Rukur now. And then he says, oh, this is fifth rak'ah. What do I do? You don't go into sajda. What do you do, ya Bilal? You go straight into tashahud. You go straight into berjay. Berjay tashahud ki halat mein berjay. Theek hai na? So you sit down straight into tashahud. You understand? All right. Jayid, that was okay. There's two issues we've discussed so far. Number three, if it's the imam, for example, the imam, he stands up and does an extra uh, action with inside the salah. Then it's upon the ma'mumin, the people who pray behind him, the fact that they do tanbih, they warn him or they let him know or they indicate to him the fact that you are increasing in your salah. How does he do that? By saying, subhanallah. And then the imam should click on the fact that, you know what? I'm adding something into my rakah. Okay, I'm adding something into my rakah. Or the fact that if it be from the woman, if it be from the woman, then they're not permitted to say, subhanallah. They have to tap their hand like this. So as an imam, if you have, for example, sisters praying behind you and the men are asleep while they're praying and then the sisters do that, then you should know as an imam, this is an indication for me, the fact that the sisters are saying, I've increased in my salah or decreased in my salah. So this is an indication from them. So upon that, it's upon the imam, the fact that he turns back from that action. And we said the fact that um, if a person is doing an extra rak'ah, for example, the imam is about to stand up and we say, subhanallah, then he should sit down. Now we move on to the fact that if a person does ziyada in aqwal, meaning he does extra in saying. So, for example, he starts to recite the Qur'an inside the rukur, or he starts to recite the Qur'an in sujood, meaning he's heedless, he's, he's tired. So, for example, he stands up and he says, at tahiyyatu lillah wa salawat Oh, subhanallah, what am I doing? <laughs> Happens. A human's a, a, a forgetful person. For example, if he sits into shahud, he says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, alhamdulillahi, rabbil alameen. And a person forgets. So, what do we do in that situation? For example, the ulama have said the fact that the person, it's permitted for him to do sajda to sahu in that case. For example, if a person said, I don't know what's going on, I've had a busy day, tired today, and he accidentally recites something in the tashahud, that which he was not supposed to recite, he should do two uh, extra sajdas at the end of it. So this is with regards to increasing in your salah. So we said if he increases um, in salah and he completes the whole rak'ah, then he does two sajdas. If he increases in salah and he remembers in duration of the rak'ah, then he sits down. And we said the fact that if the person is a leading an imam, then the person should say, Subhanallah, and the imam should do rajur and sit down. Okay? And we said the fact that imam should do two sajdas with that. And then we said with regards to the aqwal, with regards to the statements and sayings, for example, if a person starts to recite something extra, whether it be in tashahud or it be standing, then know the fact that the person is permitted. It is permitted for him to do two sajdas at the end of it. We've got time. Now we move on to the second situation, and this is a situation upon which a person decreases in his salah. For example, he leaves a rukan or he leaves a wajib. And we said, and we mentioned there are 14 arkan, there are 14 rukuns of salah. And this is an old chapter we've done a couple of days ago. And the 14 arkan of salah, if a person from those arkan, he leaves takbiratul ihram. Takbiratul ihram is this, when he enters into salah, he says, Allahu Akbar. Okay, so if istiftah, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. So takbiratul ihram is the first takbir that the person does. This is called takbiratul ihram, meaning that the person becomes haram upon him to do anything else but his salah. So he's focused now. He's, he's in a secret moment now. So within that situation, a person, if he leaves his takbiratul ihram, lam, lam tan'aqid salatuhu. 
who are in reality his salah is not accepted due to the fact that he did not enter into the situation or the position of salah meaning the fact that if the person forgot to say Allahu Akbar and he completed all four rak'ahs and then he remembers I didn't even say Allahu Akbar in the beginning then know the fact that he has to do all of his salah again did we understand that why because takbiratul ihram min al arkan is from the pillars meaning if it's dropped your salah is rejected it becomes invalid and we mentioned the situations with regards to all of those what if it's a rukun what if it's a rukun meaning if it's a pillar other than takbiratul ihram we said standing is a pillar we said going into ruku is a pillar going into sajda is a pillar yes so for example we said the fact that if a person if he forgets his pillar for example he does his qiyam and instead of going into ruku he goes into sajda he forgot to do his ruku so this is a rukun if he remembers athna as sajda if he remembers in duration of going into his sajda the fact that i've not done my ruku he stands up again goes into ruku did we understand that so he doesn't complete his sajda he comes straight back up and goes into ruku and then he will have to do two sajdas for forgetting if for example a person did not remember a person did not remember the fact that he went he did not go into ruku until after he's done his two sajdas and he stands up and he starts reciting for this next rakah oh no i did not do my ruku in my previous rakah what he does is the fact that he cancels that rakah out because he missed a rukun he cancels that rakah out and he considers this to be for example i'm standing up for the second i stood up for the second ya allah i forgot my ruku in my first rakah and then what he does is he cancels that one out and the one he's praying now is going to be his first we understand that so it's going to be his first and then when he does his salah completes it he would do two sajdas at the end of it inshallah we're coming to that we'll come to that all the situations are at tahiyyat since you asked at tahiyyat for example the person forgets and he does salam okay we inshallah will okay we will we'll come to it inshallah just make sure i don't miss anything from the book okay for example if a person does not remember the fact that he left a rukun until after salam okay illa ba'd salam so for example we said in duration of the salah he rectified himself in duration of the salah he either stood up or the fact that he cancelled his rakah and he considered that to be his first that's what we said now we move on to another situation where a person for example he does not remember until after salam and then know the fact that if it be something he missed out from his salah from the arkan of the 14 from the 14 pillars then he has to do that extra rakah once again okay we've got one little one minute left okay khalas we'll let you make some dua you keep me in your duas also inshallah we'll continue after asr tomorrow sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabina muhammad